The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the implementation of a function generator on the MSP430 microcontroller, also using an external digital to analog converter. <clears throat> so going over the basic system requirements that were met for this project, um, one of the requirements was that the function generator must use a microcontroller via an SPI interface and it should have an 8-bit minimum 8-bit resolution <clears throat> um, the output of the external DAC is received by the analog discovery and via USB to software um, all waveforms are DC biased at half of VDD which is in this case is 2.5 volts so there's a 2.5 volt offset for each waveform um, upon power up, the function generator displays a 100 hertz square wave. Um, there we go, 100 hertz frequency average. And it is within the 2.5% uh, error. <clears throat> um, to switch between waveforms, a button is implemented and we did use switch number one on the MSP430, which is the reset button. When pressed, it switches, it cycles between waveforms. With the first one being the square wave, and the second one being a sawtooth wave, and the third one being a sine wave. <clears throat> um, and if I press it one more time, it goes back to the square wave. Um, a second button was uh, interfaced. Um, so that we could cycle through different waveform frequencies and we used uh, switch number two right here and um, when pressed this increments the frequency by 100 Hertz so right now it's at 100 Hertz and this is 200 so 199.950 Hertz so it's still within the 2.5% error and this is 300 Hertz uh, 400 Hertz and also the uh, the change in frequency is applicable to the other waveforms so if I press the first switch to switch to the other waveforms it gives a different waveform at the same frequency so this is the sawtooth wave at 400 and I could go up to 500 Hertz and it cycles back and then 200 Hertz and for the sine wave the same thing 200 Hertz uh, sine wave and I could increase the frequency if I want to <clears throat> um, and also let's see a third button was also interfaced which allowed for me to uh, change the duty cycle of the square wave so if we go back to the square wave uh, let's see right here um, if for example I'm at let's say 200 Hertz square wave I could change the duty cycle by using a third button which is an external button right here um, a puller resistor was used and a capacitor is hooked up in parallel with it and then it runs to ground. The capacitor is used, the resistor and capacitor are both used in conjunction so that an RC constant is present in the circuit so it could help with debouncing. So if I press this button once, it changes the duty cycle. So we can see here that the positive duty cycle of this square wave is at 49.96%. So if I press the duty cycle button, it changes this and decreases it by 30% duty cycle. If I press it again, it <clears throat> decreases this to 10 or 20. That was a little glitch. But it goes back to being a 50 there we go and um, what else let's see and the function generator does use a 
on chip timer so no delays were used for the code for the function generator <coughs> um, and we also optimized the time it took for the DAC drive <coughs> to send uh, 16 bits to the uh, the IC, the DAC IC so <coughs> here's a screenshot of the oscilloscope output so the yellow wave is the CS signal when it's set to low um, the data is sent to the DAC in the form of 8-bit nibbles so right here the CS signal goes low and 8 bits are sent to the DAC and during this time right here uh, we make sure that the buffer register is ready to receive the next 8-bit nibble <clears throat> and as soon as that happens we uh, we exclusive or the CS signal and that signals that um, the data transmission has ended and we measure the width of our CS signal while being um, low and it came out to be 2.5 microseconds um, and that's the brief overview of the requirements the basic system requirements met by our function generator